And everybody. And it's my birthday. Oh, how did we know that? I, <laughs> I guess you guys couldn't guess. Ken, Ken did some decorating here. Oh, so yeah. you like it? Yeah, it's really nice. Very sweet of you. Yep. Looks good. Yes. How old are you? <laughs> okay, we don't talk Just about kidding. that. <laughs> that's one of the that's the taboo question. I know, I know. But I had a fun week visiting my fam in Ohio. I know it snowed. Did snow? Yes, it was very cold. What did you do all weekend? All kinds of good stuff. I had a blast. <laughs> the house was <laughs> clean for once. I know. It was good. I just hung out. Nice, nice. Well, hello everybody. Make sure you ask your questions today. You know, we really try to get to a lot of the questions. Um, if you want to for sure have your questions answered, the best option is to join our inner circle, uh, kensinnercircle.com. And that is where you're going to be able to, you know, ask questions, join our happy hours and join our book club. And we actually have a happy hour tonight with Russ Gray. I know. I'm excited. Oh about my that. gosh. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Russ is, um, so I, I chatted with him last week. I said, hey, you know, want to be in the happy hour? And, and, you know, now that the midterms are over and the mortgage rates are up, because the last time we had Russ on, if you guys might remember, uh, it's one of the, 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 the biggest YouTubes we've had, right. you know, because of his knowledge um, around currency and markets and stuff. So it's going to be a really, really good happy hour tonight. Make sure you guys uh, tune in for it because um, he is uh, – uh, extremely knowledgeable on a lot of the stuff that's going on economically yeah russ is really he's very interesting too that's why i like listening to him because he really breaks it down so you can understand it yeah but he is very very smart yeah it's gonna be a good one uh everyone's telling me happy birthday and scorpio's a rule which is totally true but <laughs> i have to agree i <laughs> <laughs> Um, but today we're going to dive in uh, to FTX, right? Yeah. So that <laughs> is big a news. big story. They're comparing FTX right now to Enron. You know what what happened with Enron, um, and also you know it, it was a little bit like a Ponzi scheme in a way. And um, but we're also going to break down how it relates to real estate and kind of some of the things going on in the real estate market right now as well. Well, I think there's a lot of it's interesting. It's obviously not real estate, but you know, there's a lot of people pulling on, you know, tugging on you to invest in things, right? And I think that's really the bigger issue, right? right. Like there's lots of options. And, um, you, you know, at the end of the day, you know, how did, how did FTX go from 32 billion, that's 32 billion in February of 2022 to bankrupt in November? So, you know, and there's a lot of really smart folks involved. The U.S. attorneys were involved, the SEC, the uh, uh, the commercial, uh, uh, the the Federal Trading Commission. Um, you, you know, there's it's interesting to me. Yeah, I, I think, you know, a lot of these other investments, especially the SEC, they, they make sure that you're accredited, not accredited. You know, you know how that works. And, and so now. There's there's a lot of people investing, let's say thousand bucks, two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. And so that's that door has been opened, uh, as you know, for a while. And uh, this is this is, by the way, this is not the first exchange commission or exchange that's gone down. Right. It's the, no. by the biggest. It's the biggest so far. Yeah, it's the biggest so far. And, and I think what's interesting to note is, you know, Sam, uh, who started this whole thing, he was just on Forbes front cover like 45 days ago. Right. That's how, that's how stupid are our, our, the people are that are running the financial system. Well, but that's what I'm saying is like, you know, sometimes people see, you know, somebody on a YouTube channel or they see somebody on an Instagram channel and they see they have a lot of followers. You know, or they see him on Forbes and they think, oh, there's no way like this guy or the girl knows what they're doing or else why would they have so many followers? Right. And so, you know, they see this guy on Forbes. They feel more comfortable when he was just running a big Ponzi scheme, really, and a big scam. So I think that people just have and we'll, we'll dive into, you know, what happened with that. But, you know, you really have to understand what you're investing in in order and what deals you're investing in. 
you can't just go by, oh, this person's popular on YouTube or this person's on Forbes or this per you know, person has a lot of followers because that doesn't always mean anything. Right. There there are some basic underpinning concepts that need to happen in order for somebody to invest in something that, you know, in my opinion, that you, you know, you got to the the one thing when I saw this go down, it's fairly recent. Mm -hmm. you, you know, what is an asset? You know, going back to the very basics of rich dad, poor dad, you know, what is an asset? What is a liability? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I look at these stocks like Carvana is another good one. You know, Carvana is um, based out of Arizona. So it's getting a lot of local news. You know, the stock was up over 300, I think, um, a, a share. And now it's under 10. You know, why is that? And that's, you know, and how, how do businesses go, grow to that kind of value and then pop? Right. Right. And that's really the issue, you, you know, uh, and how, what are some of the things that you could look for? Ask better questions about the, the one thing you got to be careful of is is um, is the down, you know, what happens on the downside. Yeah. And I think uh, Paulino said guessing the tide went out. As you always say, you know, you see who's naked when the tide goes out. So and that's exactly what happened. So so let's break down a little bit just quickly for those of you that don't know what happened with um, FTX. But basically uh, a kid because he was a kid. He was, you know, yep. 20 some years old. Sam Bankman freed. He started, you know, FTX. He started <laughs> Alameda, which is it's a futures That's exchange. It's an yeah. exchange, right? Yeah, he started an exchange. And essentially what he was doing is he was paying people to hold money for them, kind of like a savings account. And he was giving you around 8% is what I saw. But he was supposed to just be holding that, not doing anything with it. It was totally safe. But what he was actually doing is he was lending it out and, and, and basically giving it to his sister company to be lent out. Yeah, Alameda. Which is, Al Alameda. Yep, Alameda, which is totally fine. Well, not fine. It's illegal. But it worked <laughs> as long as everything was going up. But when crypto and everything else kind of hit the skids and all started to go down, that's kind of when things started falling apart for him. Yeah, they, they said it, it was essentially like a bank run on, on his reserves. So, you know, once the uh, financials and the balance sheets and everything started being exposed, then everybody started wanting to get their money. And the next thing you know, it, it wasn't there. Exactly. And, and I actually heard he was only had about 10 percent in reserves out of the whole company. Yeah. And so so anyways, you know, so a bunch of people are going to lose a bunch of money because they, you know, just invest or invested in or, you know, traded on this platform. Yeah. Yeah. There's no question there's, you know, he's going to be a, um, a pawn, you know, he, he's going to be a, uh, an example for sure. You watch, uh, you, he's, he's going to be in some big trouble. There's, there's going to be all kinds of stuff, uh, flushed out on this. You got a million people. I, I looked, um, you got 1 million investor losses right now. You think about that. Yeah. 1 million people. people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I, I don't know what I read this morning, but I want to say that the top 50 uh, investors lost billions of dollars. Yeah, right. And, and these are big names, too. So this is a it's an interesting case because, um, y you know, there's a lot of government uh, involvement here, a lot of U.S. government involvement here. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, they were donating to both parties, not just the Democratic Party, Republican, too, because they didn't want regulated. <laughs> Which, you know, um, it seems convenient, yeah, know, but, you know. you know, he had an arena, I guess, the Miami Heat play yeah. FTX arena. You know, they canceled that. There's all kinds of stuff that's going to happen. By the way, we've seen this before. We've seen a house of cards like this before on on a number of occasions. Uh, if you just go back through history, you, you see it. You know, I've seen real estate deals like this. I've seen guys raise money like this for real estate deals. Uh, that are in prison now, you know, right. one guy out of Utah that, you know, I had friends actually, unfortunately, get involved, but he pitched me and my partner, Ross, and <laughs> I'll never forget, we, we, we were sitting there, I was trying to follow his logic, you know, he's trying to raise money, I was trying to follow his logic, and I remember after about 30 minutes of him pitching us, I finally just, uh, my, <laughs> Ross actually said, he goes, I, I just have one question what did you just say? <laughs> because, because, you know, it was really 
um, it didn't make sense as I was trying to follow the financial logic on what, what was, what was the actual asset that underpinned it. And ironically, this guy was promising an 8% return. Well, you always say when there's a promise of a certain return, like a guarantee, uh, and it's a little higher, you do need to yeah. be suspicious of that. Right. And you guys, at the end of the day, here's the thing, like, um, you know, what, what is actually going to pay that, that that's actually, <laughs> that's actually the most important thing. What's going to pay everyone in, in, in our case, it's, it's the actual real estate deal. So did the deal that I bought, is it going to produce or not period? Mm -hmm. And there's a hard asset behind it, you, you know, and not everything goes up. Sometimes they go down. And I think we're starting to see that right now in real estate too. You know, we're starting to see interest rates, creep up as we know or the, i guess they're not creeping up the fed is uh, <laughs> they're flying up, yeah, <laughs> flying up. Um, uh, but cap rates are also increasing and for those of you who might not know what that is what that means is if a cap rate goes from let's say four to five that means that the building was is now worth 20 percent less from four to five is 20 percent one point um, and so you know you're starting to see these valuations even on real estate go down so if 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 you invested on on some kind of a real estate deal where the the value is going down because cap rates have gone up, then um, you know it's not necessarily this, but it does mean that that business plan might not be the value of that real estate might not be what you know what 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 you were told that it. it potentially could be because of the market conditions. And by the way, real estate does go up and it does go down. What most people that have raised money in the last 10 years, however, have never seen it go down. Right. And that's the problem. That is the issue. They keep thinking it's going to go up and it's going to go up. Right. And, you know, and they're not, you know, really being completely honest with their investors either. Right. So, well, I, I don't, my experience so far with all the people I've seen been raised money, I don't think they're trying to be deceptive. Mm -hmm. I really, truly don't believe. I just don't think they have the experience to see the fact that it could go down. <laughs> right. I, 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 in, the, in my heart, I don't believe that people are raising money from investors right now in real estate deals, um, you know, to, to you know, uh, uh, deceptively. I, I, I don't. I, I think that they're saying, hey, what? went up last year it's going to go up again and the the issue is that they haven't been through the ups and downs and and start to see the signs then that you know that's just wisdom and experience right now how how about those that are watching though that are invested in a real estate deal that maybe i mean there has to be real estate out there and, and some of you comment if you are if you're invested in a deal that's not doing what it was promised to do right now you know um what should people be looking for? Because I think a lot of the syndicators maybe aren't being straightforward yeah. either. Well, they may or may not be there. You know, I know a lot of them um, that are actually scrambling right now. So right. there's a couple big issues facing real estate syndicators. The The big one is is dry powder or just reserves. So in this particular case, in the FTX issue, the the there was a bank run on the reserves. So, you know, so there wasn't enough to obviously uh, for all the assets. So that's the first thing is, you know, what are what are the reserves? What kind of dry powder does the syndicator have? Um, there's I'm going to do a video actually for Friday that talks about you know, break even. So you have your operating expenses and you have your mortgage and any CapEx, let's say, you know, those are expenses, and so there's a break-even number for that. And as your mortgage goes up, then, of course, your break-even gets harder. So, you know, your percentage, uh, what you need in income to cover your expenses isn't there. And so that's what's, that's what's being faced now. So you have two things happening. You have rising expenses, potentially flat or even negative income. Not in all cases. In some cases, there are markets where things are still doing very well, and and that what that what happens is, um, you know, you have to dip into your reserves. 
if you don't have reserves, then you're going to be in trouble or you might not have enough to, you know, for the prolonged period of time. And the other thing is, is if the exit is based on, you know, the property being worth more and that's all you have, then you're probably in big trouble. Paul wanted to know how many months of operating expenses should be kept in reserves. So we do six. Mm -hmm. So it's a great question. So uh, interesting question. So before the pandemic, we were at three. Right. I thought uh, Ross and I both, we, you know, strategically we had three months. Then when the pandemic hit and we're like, uh Oh, like we might not get paid from our, from the, you know, our tenants, uh, on, you know, with 10,000 tenants that ended up not being the case, but regardless, we said, okay, this is something that we did not foresee. Let's double it. Let's, let's go to six months. So we have six months reserves on, on everything that's operating expenses. That's not, um, um, uh, you know, that's everything. So, uh, I think that's, you know, that's where we are. And Astro wants to know, Ken, is F the FTX issue a run on the bank or is it a deception issue? Or um, is it an ignorance issue? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough. Uh, what I do know is that what, what they described it is the bank run on their reserves. People wanted their money and there wasn't, and it wasn't there. So it might be. Well, the deception part was they said that they weren't lending it out and they were. Yeah, right, so. right. Yeah. And, and, and um, so what happens is, you know, uh, the traditional bank run is, you know, just think about it. Like if you had money in a bank, um, you know, if if there's a bank run, there's not enough money in that bank to pay all their you know depositors, right? So that's what a bank run is. So that's essentially what happened: is that people said, "I want I want my money," right. and they didn't have it. Yeah, and everything they invested in went down. So even if they got all their investments money from it back, yeah. it didn't cover it either. But I think the deceptive part was not telling people what they were actually doing with the money. But I think ignorance came in because they probably thought everything's fine. It's going to keep going up. So this isn't going to be a problem. That's the issue I yeah. think is, you know, it, 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 we've, we've had a good run so far. It's going to continue. And that is the wisdom piece. You know, and I've been involved in real estate deals that have, have not worked. And trust me, you learn a lot more when, when, the deal does not work <laughs> than when it does work. You really don't learn a lot. All you think is, okay, that worked. I'm going to go raise it and do it again. But you really learn a lot when it does not work. But there's also like an age component, right? I mean, not always, but you know, the Sam guy was 20 some years old. A lot of these syndicators are younger too. So to your point, they've never been through a downturn. And everyone kind of said, as you said, we were in a bubble and you did a video on this in 2020 and how things were going to come down. Everyone was like, no, this time's different. This time's different. And even with crypto, it's going to 100 grand. This can't go down. You know, we, it's went down before, but this is different. So it's always people always think things are different. But then when you've been through a couple corrections, you realize that maybe it's probably not different. You know, not that different where it's not going to go down. Yeah. The, the, the real issue is, you know, what is the asset worth? At the end of the day, that you got to think about that is what's going to pay everybody back. So, you know, so everybody has to get paid from something. So if you buy a house at a hundred grand and, and you sell it at one fifty, that 50 is what pays everybody. So, you know, that's, it's that simple. So at the end of the day, you know, if, 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 um, you know, you, this happens in oil and gas, Mm -hmm. This happens all over the place, guys. You know, uh, I've had friends that have been involved in in oil and gas, um, uh, in oil and gas investments that they didn't even they didn't they didn't even they weren't actually even uh, valid. In other words, it was they were just raising money to pay out the money. So the early money the, does pretty well. What what the, what happens is they pay out the money. Uh, they pay dividends on the early money with the money that they're raising second. So that's how a Ponzi works. Right. That's it's like a definition. Ponzi scheme. Yeah. yeah. So we should probably define the definition of what, what a Ponzi is. So um, a Ponzi is, well, one definition is when you're using new investor money to pay uh, on old investor money. So in other words, the, the asset itself is supposed to pay the 
return if you think about it. So with an apartment building, let's say like we do, the cash flow from the apartment building, that's the return. It's not from me getting a million bucks of new investors. So so that's that's how that works. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Paulino had a very good quote. It's very interesting. It says, it's not what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that gets you in trouble. Yeah, that's you know? very well said. So, um, so make sure you guys hit the like button. We love this. It really helps us, um, you know, to promote our stuff to other people. And also uh, to be an Inner Circle member and ask Ken questions, just go to kensinnercircle.com. For those members, we also have a happy hour tonight with Russ Gray. Very good. It's, I'm super excited. He's yeah, one of my favorite uh, people to talk to. Well, especially, so. we'll, we'll talk about this FTX thing with him, yeah, too. Yeah, he That'll will be, be able to break yeah, it down for sure. It'll be great. So make sure you hit the like button. We're at 40. I'd like to get over 75 today. All right. So we're going to hop into some questions now from our inner circle. So Zach from our inner circle said, I just bought with cash half an acre in a good residential area. I'm going to build a home to rent and use, and I'm going to use the land as a down payment on the construction loan. Which supplies, um, when supplies and labor settle, so I'm not stuck paying interest for stalled construction. What do you think of that plan? I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple reasons why I like it. One is, um, you know, you're, you, you don't have any debt on your land. I like that. Um, that means that y y you can weather. Um, and the, the next step you said very nicely, is, which is you're going to wait until the labor and the construction costs and all that stuff stabilize. But I love that idea. I actually own land just like that. And, um, um, you know, I'm just waiting as well. And, you know, I, I think that um, uh, it's, you know, uh, the, the land, I don't know how, how long. Uh, we've, we've owned land five, ten plus years. And, um, you know, land can go up and down too. So, uh, you know, just, just, you know, be aware of that. So I don't know where it is, but I, I love the strategy of taking, cause that's basically your down payment. So you take that land as your collateral for your down payment for your construction loan. Um, and you just got to manage that really tight. Just make sure the math works on the rent. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Sophia wants to know, um, where can I find out where the wealthy people are and what they're investing in right now? Watching um, our channel. What's that? Watching yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it, I, I think it depends. Uh, obviously, there's a there's a lot of people that are um, investing in energy and and different kinds of tech. So energy is projected to do extremely well. Um, you know, people a lot of people are watching the dollar and are um, watching what's happening with the dollar and of course this crypto situation. But um, and so some people are are, are uh, moving into gold. I know there's a lot of a lot of people really really very bullish on gold. Uh, I don't particularly look at gold as a investment as much as I, I consider it a, a hedge or an insurance policy against the US dollar um, you know uh, and there are certain kinds of real estate that's still doing very well like data storage um, um, last mile distribution so think of Amazon uh, cell towers things like that so you, you know uh, real estate is uh, not a one-trick pony it's there's a lot of different kinds and um, so there's quite a Quite a few, um, you know, I, I got a, I just got involved in a CBD startup on well, that just like a little over a year ago. That's doing very, very, very well. So you start to look at these industries that are doing well. Um, and I don't know, you know, technically, I guess we're not in a recession, but there's a lot of really, really, really big companies that have started in recessions. So just pay attention. You know, some industries are spiraling down and some are spir spiraling up. Absolutely. Um, Ron, uh, Ron's dad from YouTube says that they own a rental in a fairly affluent suburb of Gig, Har Gig Harbor. Uh, and he's seeing rent prices dropping and more rentals sitting three to four weeks. Do you think a real estate crash will hit rental prices just as harshly as seller prices? So, um, first of all, I do know Gig Harbor very well. I'm from the area. So, um, y you know, I, I, I think that one of the things that uh, we're, people are suffering from right now is our affordability issues. And I think a lot of people jumped into, uh, it sounds like you might be in the short term 
market. Um, uh, but I'm not quite sure uh, based on your question of one or two weeks. Uh, I no, he's just saying the rentals are sitting for three oh, to four weeks. Yeah, I still think that's healthy. Yeah. So, you know, I think that a lot of people have been spoiled. I'm very used to having a rental sit for two or three weeks in my 20 year career. So I think we've been extremely spoiled in the, you know, in, in the last little run we've had. So, uh, you know, I've been in markets where there's been um, two, three months free on a 12 month lease. So, you know, that's that's a, that's significant. You know, something that's sitting vacant for two or three weeks is is um, something to watch. Um, but uh, certainly uh, not to be too concerned about at the moment. I I really strongly believe that people are going to be pushed into rental market. I continue to say that uh, with the high interest rates, they're getting further and further away from buying a home and um, and they're getting squeezed financially. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you know, people have to live somewhere, right? And most people aren't going to want to live at home with their parents. So they either have to buy a house or they have to rent. There's not really much options for them. Now, they can get creative and get roommates and, you know, consolidate, I guess. But they're going to have to live somewhere. So realistically, you know, like I've said this on the show before, but normally I'd have attendance for one to two years and then they go buy a house because that's just the transition yep. that my properties usually are. And my tenants have all been there for three, three, four years now because they just can't afford to buy. They're waiting. But now ho housing prices are starting to go down a little bit. But, you know, interest rates are going up. So it's going to just be too expensive for them uh, still. Now, if housing prices drop significantly, maybe. But then that means, you know, if interest rates still go are going up, it's not going to help them that much. There's a number of other factors, too. One is that that particular submarket might be oversupplied. Mm -hmm. So. There might be a lot of new supply that's hit the market. Uh, that could be a problem long term and or, and or short term. The other one is um, affordability, which we talked about. But another one is is, is uh, employers. You know, what's happening with, you know, I've, I've been in situations where um, like um, a base, there was a base closure as one example. Or another one I can think of, um, there was a power plant actually in, in uh, what in Eastern Washington, where you know a, a big employer moved or, or relocated or uh, downsized or whatever, and it affected it just has ripple effects through the whole economy. So those are all c things that can affect um, you know the rental market. Absolutely, and if you're looking at just you know uh, sole owners like independent owners, you have to do a little bit of research too because I know like I do this a little bit with my rentals where sometimes people don't pool their rental down after it's rented or their restrictions are so crazy that like, you know, if they don't allow animals or something, right. Well now you're, you know, eliminating 50 to probably 60% of all people. So you kind of have to look at that too, as far as why places aren't running. It's not always just the price. Yeah. Right. That's, that's correct. But you, you do have to stay on top of it, especially in, in times right now. Absolutely. Um, so Dave has a good question on YouTube. He says, I have 250 grand in cash today from the sale of my home. Do you have any thoughts on investment opportunities in 2023? And then he was saying potentially self-storage. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's always boils down to cash flow always. So, uh, you know, if, if it's an existing self-storage that has great cash flow, and you vetted the numbers, then I, you know, those are typically pretty good, uh, but then not always. I've owned some that have been tough and I've owned some that have done very, very, very well. So, um, you know, I, I still think it's early personally uh, to invest uh, and I'm, I'm waiting for there to be a little bit of seller pain. Absolutely. And also, you know, I, this is, I'm asking you, as far as self-storage goes, is that something people cut when things get tight in a recession? It can be. Yeah. You think about it, like, look at, that's a good question, actually. Look, look at all the things that, that people cut when times are tough. They cut gym memberships. They cut, you know, Netflix or, you know, uh, reoccurring subscriptions. They, they start to look at, well, maybe, you know, I can reduce this storage unit and move everything into my garage or whatever it might be, or maybe they sell everything. So they start to look at things that they can, you know, minimize. Absolutely. 
So Garrett from the Inner Circle has a good question. He said, do you put much weight on discounted cash flow when you're deciding to purchase multifamily? And if so, how do you determine the discount rate? Would love to know your thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, I don't actually. Uh, it's, just, it's a it's a very, very good question. It's a, l- a little bit different. I, I think that you know, there's a bunch of factors when I'm investing in, in, in real estate, the right now I'm primarily, and most of my investors, including, uh, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, you know, they're concerned about tax. So they want cash flow, but what they really want are the tax benefits. Um, so, you know, so as you start to look at the investment, obviously, uh, on the in the early days, I think that you're concerned mostly about. Well, I think the the inexperience they want the capital gain. <laughs> the next level is probably cash flow. You know, and, and people are trying to build their cash flow, their passive income. Then what happens is you get so much passive income, or you have so much cash coming out of something else. You're actually worried more about tax. So all of that has a, an effect. Plus, how long you hold it. Um, is uh, another massive factor. So, you know, if it's if it's going to be like a stock, which I don't recommend. And this is this is the difference between me and most flippers. I I've owned properties 15, 20 years, you, you know, and we're long term holders. We're traditionally not um, trying to time the markets and trying to exit because when you do, you have all of that uh, depreciation recapture and all of the all of the things that that happen as a result of of now, now moving into cash and then reinvesting it again. So, so I have a very different view on the way I invest in real estate. And right now, I'm trying to um, invest for tax losses. And um, you know that's why the the opportunity zones were so popular. You know, a lot of people sold their businesses, they sold all kinds of things, and then they could roll that capital gain into these even though there might not be cash flow in these in these opportunity zones they got to defer those tax losses so you have to calculate all of those things um as um you know opportunistic or not opportunistic you know absolutely um there's a little bit of discussion on seller pain on our youtube (laughs) so uh mike 99 says i think the deals now in real estate that have been listed for 80 plus days it's time to make lowball offers and I wanted to say something that you suggested to my brother where you said, you know, if you there's a house that's been sitting for sale for a long time, ask him how much their mortgage payment is and just offer that. Yeah. And it might not even be worth that. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. If it's still a good deal for you. But I'm just saying. So like, I've they done might this. Take it. Yeah. yeah. So when I bought a I bought a vacation home in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, one of the first ones I bought, um, it was for sale, whatever. And I found out what the mortgage amount was with Washington trust. And that's what I offered. And the seller took it. Yeah. You know, cause they're servicing that, you know, they're, they have a monthly payment on that. So they just wanted to exit. So I, I was able to get the, obviously I had to, um, buy it and then, you, you know, um, get it, you know, um, you know, he was able to wipe off that particular debt of his, but, um, you know, th- I, we've been in this situation before where sometimes that's not even a good deal. Right. You know, uh, depending on how far you think the market's going to go, it's not always good to step into somebody's debt. But um, but you it is interesting to know what the seller's pain point is. Mm-hmm. So if. If if you know what their mortgage pay, uh, is, their mortgage payment, which should be recorded, it's a lien on the, against their title. Um, that is helpful and and can help in your negotiations. Absolutely. So Clint has a question on YouTube, and I want to address this because I actually feel bad for him because he's in a situation oh. where he's trying to sell his house, and he had bought the house with his home equity line. Uh, the down payment. And so obviously that payment keeps going up as yeah. interest rates are going up and he can't sell his house. And right now it's selling at a, he has it listed at a $20,000 loss. So he said, how big of a loss should I take before it no longer makes sense? So, and I'm asking, cause I'm not sure in this situation, if you can't take on the loss, it goes back to the bank, right? Like if, it, if the loss is too much, you just hand it back yeah. to the bank or how does that work? Yeah. First of all, I'm sorry you're going through this. I, I 
I think that um, so here's how it works. Um, if 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 the bank has to, this is I'm going off a of memory here. If if the if if the bank let's say has a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage on something, and it goes back to the bank and they sell it for four hundred, I think you're still on the hook for the hundred from a tax standpoint. I believe. So you don't owe the hundred; you just owe it as ta- the tax on the well. 100? You basically are defaulting, right? So yeah. there, yeah. So of course you're mm-hmm. you're you're still owed, but the you know there's a there's a process of default, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you know it's 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 too bad. I'm I'm sorry. You know there's a, um, but they I do know that back in oh eight nine and ten is that right, Jerry? They they went back after the they go after that uh, deficiency piece, right? It's okay. Yeah, so it depends on the state, but um, um, you know, uh, yes. So that is it. I, I've told, you know, I've told my friends that are in this situation if if they can, you know, just take whatever they can get and then work, you know, work that out. You want to get get out from under that that monthly payment. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be right on this, but I think rates are going to go up again on December 5th when they meet. And I think that uh, they're projecting to actually r- rise even more next year. I mean, we're still at 7.7 inflation rate and uh, their target is two. Now, um, that what does that mean? It, it just means that that's their target, but it doesn't mean that they're going to go keep raising rates till that. But um, you get the point. I think I think next year's going to be uh, rough for everybody. Well, and you did tell say something interesting too. You said right now the smart sellers are doing deep discounts. So if Clint really wants to sell the home and doesn't want, you know, a bankruptcy and a foreclosure and all that, the deep discounts also sometimes are the way to go, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. I, yeah. I you just got to I, I no one knows, no one has a crystal ball and and I think that um no one knows where uh housing prices are going to go but they've fallen quite 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 fast you know in just a short period of time and i i i still think that they're heading down yeah unfortunately yeah we've been following a lot of real estate because it is you know kind of like you clint people are starting to feel that pain and wondering how much they're going to have to lower the cost of the properties and so if you really want to sell it i would figure out what your bottom line is or and just go there yeah, or figure out a way to cover your uh increase you know through house hacking roommates or mm-hmm. stuff like that you you can also think on the income side you know if you can ride it through so True. that's another that's another opportunity you don't you, you know if if you have if you can write it you know write it down or write it back up i i'm a big believer that in the long term interest rates are gonna have to go down again i do but I don't know if that's going to be 2024, 2025. So you got to kind of evaluate that. Yeah. And it looks like really his main issue is his home equity line payment, the 20 grand. So if you can figure out another source of income, like Ken was saying, to cover that home equity line, then you might be able to hold on to the house and the mortgage while you get that paid off. I mean, yeah. you know, 20 grand is a lot of money, but it's also manageable if you're, you know, working a second job or you figure out a way yeah. that the home can produce. Yep. more income yeah you know yep. so airbnb there's tons of ways that might be able to produce more income other than because he does it sounds like he lives in it, it doesn't sound like he rents it yeah so there may be ways you can make some income on your house to cover your home equity payment yep. there are so uh, you know get creative around that so it, it, it could be you just need to generate more income Absolutely. So we want to tell you guys about our Black Friday sale. Make sure you check it out. It's going to be running through Cyber Monday. Uh, We have some really, really, really low prices. So if you were looking to get one of our courses, um, we have, you know, buying your first rental property and also joining the inner circle. Now is the time because you basically get the inner circle membership for free if you buy the course and all of Ken's books. Yep. So, and it's very, very much discounted. It's a two ninety nine for all of it. Um, so go to the Ken com slash black Friday, 2022 to check that out. All right. And it's actually, I think it's already on sale now, right, Jerry? Yep. You can buy it now. So Andy from the inner circle has a great question. He said, I'm working on a deal and the owner is older and has memory issues. And he's the only person on the title. 
He wants to, he wants to lease back while looking for his next place. Any suggestions or things to be cautious of for my own legal protection? Yeah, just get everything in writing. That's all and signed. That's all. You just want to make sure that, um, um, you know, uh, that he's of, of right mind and capable, right? You just don't want to be um, dealing with any of that. So just make sure it's all buttoned up and tight. Yeah, absolutely. Would you yeah. get anyone else involved? Like, would you have him maybe get an attorney a as well? A notary probably is good enough. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, just make sure. Yeah, you, you know, it's... I, 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 attorneys are a pain in the butt, you know. Maybe you can get somebody to represent both of you. Um, and you can both agree to that. That's easier if they... You know, but sometimes when you get two, they, they you know, they, attorneys don't... They like to bell. Well, they don't... They. You think about it, they don't get, um, they don't make money when they solve stuff. Like, you know, <laughs> they only make money when they argue. So, the, you know, my ex that's been my experience at least. So I think that, um, you, you know, obviously it's clear that he's got a direction and a plan. It sounds like um, not com um, completely not with it. So, but you do want to protect yourself and him, mm -hmm. you know, uh, make sure that, um, uh, everything everything you're doing is is completely above board absolutely so chad from the inner circle um he's basically trying to retire off his ted rental properties uh, eventually so he's still 14 years away from retirement so does he do you recommend he tries to pay all the properties off in the 14 years and then he has the full income to live on or should he write out these 30-year mortgages that are low they're around four percent just write them out for 30 years uh, I if I had four percent money, I would not pay it off. So now your tenant pays it off anyway, right? So that's what it should be. At least your tenants pay off your mortgages. So um, I would just that's what I would do. I have I have a friend that has done this very successfully. He's got over a hundred houses, and you know this is over the long haul. He he's like, yeah, when I want something, I just sell one. You know, and, and I think, you know, the, the goal here is to lock those mortgages at four. It sounds like you have and just have your tenants just just have them pay them off, pay them off, pay them off, pay them off, pay them off over time and use the tax benefits from that. Um, and then, you know, at some point you can decide, you know, do you want something? You could sell one or re maybe refinance, perhaps uh, when, you know, um, depending on the rate, uh, depending on what the rates are at the time. So you don't really have to decide now. Uh, you know, there there are uh, these are locked and loaded f for the long haul. You, you you're you know you're you're at four percent and inflation's at seven. So you're in well, good shape. Well, and look at it this way: coming from the person that loves to pay off everything and then regrets it a little bit. Um, you know, twenty years ago, think of, you know, like the mortgages in fourteen years that you have are going to be so much less than they are right now as far as like what inflation is, right? So, you know, say you have a, I don't know, $1,200 payment, that could be nothing in 15 years from now. Because 15 years ago, think about what home prices were. Think about, you know, all those things, right? And so I just think that you should just hold them. Yeah. You'll be I, fine. I do too. I, you know, those, those, those loans, I think you should look at the loans as an asset. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what you should be looking at. The, the loans are an asset and congratulations uh, for you to get those because that's what everybody's envious of right now because yep. you're not getting 4% debt. And so you'd be crazy, in my opinion, um, to pay off those today um, and, and just let your tenant do it over time. Absolutely. All right. So Eric from the inner circle says he's inheriting a piece of land in a mobile in a 55 and over mobile home community in Florida. So the problem is like everything got destroyed by Hurricane Ian. Yeah. So he can now either rebuild the mobile home or sell the land. If it were you, what would you do? Um, well, I, again, like, you know, the, you're going to have a probably a tax consequence for and you're going to be sitting in cash. So if you need the cash for something, you know, I can't imagine it's going to be a tremendous amount of money. For, you know, a vacant piece of land in a mobile home park is, um, although it might be, um, you, you know, uh, I think if you can turn that into, you have zero basis personally, um, if you can turn that into, um, 
a monthly, you know, a monthly income, then, you know, I would do that. You know, I don't know how the rental uh, rates are in that community or anything like that, but um, that might be a gift for you to, you know, just kind of like that earlier question we had where the, the guy bought the land and he was waiting to put something on it. Um, you know, it, it might be, uh, if, if you're trying to build passive income, then, then that, that, that is a, a great first step. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then awareness on YouTube basically is saying right now they have a paid off house mm -hmm. is now a good time to buy another one and rent that one out. But I just said, you want to wait. I would. Yeah. Wait. Be yeah. patient. This is what I told my friend. Cause my friend, uh, Jess, you know, she was worried like, we want to buy, but we don't want to miss the dip, you know? Uh -huh. And the truth is you're not going to miss the dip. The dip is a long, painful yeah. process. It's not a quick, oh, it went down and now it went straight back up. It's a long process. Just be patient. You're not going to miss it. This is not a dip yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not even a dip yet. But, but when yeah. it happens, it's not a slow thing or it's not a uh, yeah. fast thing. Right. Like, you know, think about the, f the first thing that happens is... Um, seller denial and that's what's happening right now you know people are scrambling you know to try to figure out how to keep their their assets um and uh you know that's kind of the first step so you know i i just don't uh you know with rate increases going up even more uh which i believe they're going to uh i i, I think the 2023 maybe this time in 2023 would be a good time to look perhaps but i would i would give yourself a little bit of time absolutely yeah there's just there's just no no rush you know um and then we have a couple questions on a good property management software do you know this or is that just because sure. you're so What's big question? okay yeah. Yeah, we Basically, use yardy yardy okay we use it uh you know the one we use is yardy uh y-a-r-d-i um there's a bunch out there uh you know it's there's there's no really one stop shop solution for for this you, you know there's a it depends on how much how many assets you have um you know yardy can be expensive but it has a, a full gl with general ledger it has a full you know obviously uh, ap and ar accounts receivable and uh, accounts payable uh modules but um you know, it generates a full financial package for each investment. So, um, again, their accounting packages are not really great for managing. So that's a very different question. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Oh, having a little glitch here with YouTube. We had a good question. Oh, there we go. Uh, Man Cool is saying, Ken, if you had to start over today with no money and no resources, how would you go, go about doing it in today's age? Well, um, I think that, um, again, I always I always default back to, um, you know, in, investors invest in. Um, in something that you create in your mind, so like just being able to see a deal is uh, is how you make money. So, you know, whether it's a value add community or buying something that's vacant and putting a tenant in it or buying a piece of land and putting a structure on it, you know, there people drive by these things all the time. And um, the one with the best plan is the one that um, does the best. So I think that it just boils down to education and be able to see a deal. It's not necessarily what do I invest in and, and will it go up? Because for me, it's been about seeing things that others, uh, you know, haven't been able to see. I, I have friends that bought a grocery store that went, you know, a big grocery store went out of business. And so he put a self storage in it. I have another one that, um, you know, uh, bought an office building and they're converting it to apartments. I have another one that bought a whole, you know, a, um, uh, a little sweet hotel and, and turned it into short term rentals. And so there's, there's things that happen all around that, that I think, um, you, you know, you can learn and, and then, then it's easy to put the money together w once you figure out how to do that. But I would also stick with a niche. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're nine likes away from 100. So let's get there. Oh. Press the like button. Hey, by the way, 
Happy birthday to Daniil. Come on, know, give her those right? likes. Happy birthday to me. Somebody said, are you 21? Yes, I'm 21 years old today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so another good question we have is from Jason. So this is from our inner circle. And he's basically asking, he said he's invested in a deal and he understands the deal, but the syndicator is not being transparent with the letters to the investors. Oh. So he knows that the deal is um, struggling and not you know, going to be hitting numbers, but the uh, syndicator is emailing them saying everything's great. You know, we're, we're, we're on track. We're going to be able to sell this thing. What, how would you address this without coming? He wants to know how you would address this without coming across to brass. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fair. I, I would just get him on the phone or have a face to face meeting and go in with your facts. So not, not general stuff. So, um, you know, and it might be that they have a plan. Right. right. It, you know, it might be that you don't completely understand their plan. Um, and so if you have really good information on rents or values or whatever, and, and you can go in and back all that up and it's not just things you've heard or theory, um, then, you know, the, the best as always to um, to have a to have a meeting. You know, we have properties ourselves that, um, you know, have struggled and I get on the phone with the investors and they say, this is what's going on. You know, we had a trouble. We had a, um, uh, a manager that left or we had this or we had that or whatever it is. Our renovations are costing more or our debt's higher or whatever. Um, and not everyone deals, you know, that way. But we have, uh, we're, I actually literally, right before I did this live, sat with my uh, head of investor relations uh, all morning. Um, talking about inv investor emails that are coming in and asking questions and what are they asking and and um, so uh, it's part of the process and uh, y you know if if you if you want to challenge it then you know but make sure that make sure you have your information absolutely yeah go in with all facts no emotion yeah it's it's fair yep it's yep. your money absolutely you should know um. All right, make sure you guys check out our Black Friday sale. Jerry, can you put that up on the screen? Um, we have awesome. If you were thinking about getting the course or joining the Inner Circle or getting any of Ken's books, now is the time to do it. We're doing a heavy, heavy, heavy discount here for you guys. So go to KenMacroy.com slash Black Friday 2022. Yeah. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. And All you're right. taking me out on a I nice am. dinner tonight. Of course I am. All right. <laughs>